We're going to come out of Matthew chapter 10. And as we read this morning, where Jesus declares that the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Jesus was a problem solver. He didn't just declare it and then wait for somebody to come up with the answer. He had the answer. He was the answer. He is the answer. Because in the subsequent verses, he, he calls the disciples. Singles out his 12 to whom uh, he is going to equip and empower. He empowers them. He gives them the power, the authority to cast out demons, to heal all manner of sickness and disease. And he's prepared to send them out. We said that they are, in essence, receiving their marching orders because prior, what the military does prior to a deployment, prior to a TDY is they, they brief, they inform, they let people know where they're going, what they're going to be doing, where they're going to be staying, what they're going to be paid, where their rations are coming from. If it's a combat related thing, then they let them know who the enemy is, what their targets are. And so in this whole Extended passage, <laughs> 42 verses. Jesus has given the disciples their marching orders. He's called them. He's given them their marching orders. We're just breaking it down section by section with what, what Jesus has let them know. Today, we're going to go through Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 through 23. And the subtitle today, it's Marching Orders Part 3. But the subtitle today is Attacks Will Come. Attacks Will Come. We know that as we walk, as we walk out our calling in Christ, we're going to encounter opposition just for being a follower of Christ. We're walking, we're walking it out in Christ, but we're going to be attacked. We're going to have opposition just, just for being a follower of Christ. Like I said before, military pre-deployment briefings, if the AOR, area of responsibility, if, if it's a combat zone, they're going to brief us who the enemy combatants are. It's going to let us know their preferred method of attack. It's going to emphasize that even though they have a preferred method of attack, that's not going to be the sole method of attack. But this just lets us know to remain vigilant and diligent, aware of our surroundings, so that we may stay prepared. Even, yes, the U.S. military has enemies <laughs> who will attack. The baddest, most difficult to defeat military in the world, yes, does have people that will attack. But in the spiritual battle, there are enemies, there are, there are combatants who will come against us as well. Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. We went over these last week as well, but I want to emphasize something slightly different. Verses 19 and 20 says, they read, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. And that just lets us know that we are God's Trojan horse. You know the story of the Trojan horse. <laughs> How the enemy forces 
wanted to get their men on the inside. So they built this giant horse and they hid inside of it. And once they once they got inside, <laughs> they were inside the enemy's walls. Then the men came out <laughs> and, and, and did some damage. Well, we're, we're God's Trojan horses to get his word <laughs> into places where it might not normally make it into. Because in previous verses, 16 and 17, it says, But beware of men, verse 17, for they will deliver you up before councils and scourge you in the synagogue. We're God's Trojan horses to get his word before councils where it might not normally make it in. Yeah, yeah. Because that word dwells within us in the form of the Holy Spirit, in what we've read, in what we've heard preached. That's God's word dwelling within us. That's the one that's going to come out and do the damage in that Trojan horse manner when we get brought before the council. Because the council is not going to invite us in to be a part of the council. They don't want us to be a part of the council. That's why the council is the council. So when we're out there just sharing and preaching the word, and it's going to make men angry, and men are going to bring us before those councils. But little do they know, they're falling for the trap. Falling for the sound. Because he's just saying that we don't have to worry about our defense. We don't have to worry because we can't defend ourselves like God can. Our worries, our fears, our thoughts, our reactions toward God's plan of victory. We had, we had a defeated enemy. We had him a victory. When we let ourselves, when we let our words get in the way. They say, don't worry about what it is we're going to say. Because the Holy Spirit is. But the whole thing of verse 19 and 20 is the first part of verse 19. But when they deliver you up. But when they deliver you up. There's no if here. There's not a condition. <laughs> There's no question as to whether it's going to happen. It says, but when they deliver you up. So it's going to happen. Again in verse 17, for they will deliver you up to councils and, and, and scourge you in the synagogues. They say it's going to happen. Verse 19, but when they deliver you up. <coughs> so we know it's going to happen. It's part of God's plan. We're the Trojan horses. God has something he wants to get inside. We're the vessels by which it's going to get inside. Verse 21 says, Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his children, and children will rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death.